Good morning, hello, and uh, welcome to this, what is a very cold, very wet, miserable London morning. Um, it is the beginning of June. Should be uh, nice and warm, but it's not. But there you go, it's London. Um, so today, what I'm going to do is, uh, I've just come to the realisation that I have lived in London for a while now. And there still are a few areas that elude me. I know of them. I know the areas around them. How to get to and from them areas. But I've never really uh, wandered the streets of certain areas uh, and tried to connect the dots. So, today, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try and connect the dots around the back streets from here in Old Street to Farringdon. So we're going to make our way uh, through the back streets and connect them dots. That's the plan. Hopefully it doesn't rain. Let's see what happens. Dame Mary Page, relict of Sir Gregory Page Bart. See the part of this life, March the 4th, 1728, in the 56th year of her age. We come around here, we get an idea of what she died from. In 67 months, she was tapped. 66 times had taken away 240 gallons of water without ever repinning her uh, repinning at her case or ever fearing the operation now I don't know what that means but uh, they took 240 gallons of water out of this lady That's interesting. Who knows? Alright, so like I say, I, uh, I don't know where I'm going today. All I know is I need to head westish. We'll see where we end up. Uh, but we are walking through uh, this area known as Clerkenwell, which is uh, taken from a well. Uh, the name is taken from a well within the area, which was rediscovered apparently back in 1926. Uh, but this area was uh, really uh, big time devastated during the blitz of World War II and that's why a lot of uh, council buildings in the more brutalist architecture kind of style have been thrown up and that was back in the, um, in the 50s, back in the 60s and uh, these days we've got all these buildings like around here all around there very much uh, brutalist architecture. Um, I'm now walking around the uh, Barbican area. If you would have got a flat here uh, when they were first 
given to people and then bought it in the 1980s for pennies. You'll be laughing right now. These uh, apartments, or what we call flats, are worth millions these days. Crazy money, crazy money. Right in the centre of London. Crazy. But uh, Clerkenwell, Clerkenwell itself, many famous residents through the years. Uh, most recently, Gillian Anderson played Scully in The X Files. She lives in the area. Uh, William Blake. Uh, Charles Dickens, um, Oliver Cromwell, leader of the parliamentarians, he used to live in this area. Uh, Michael Fagan, don't know if he still does, he's the guy that broke into Buckingham Palace back in the 80s. And um, Vladimir Lenin used to live here as well. So it's got a uh, big history and it was pretty much in its own law because it was outside the city walls of London so it had its own jurisdiction. And um, apparently, it had a uh, very big problem with uh, brothels in the area a long time ago. In fact, uh, features in one of Charles Dickens' novels about the area uh, for ill repute. This is actually where uh, Fagan and the Apple Dodger inducted. Oliver Twist, that's it. Inducted him. Uh, it's a bit pocketed. There we have a little bit of the London Wall, the Roman Wall that went around the city of London. When the Romans were here, 43 AD to 410, built a massive wall around the city of London. And that's why this area where we are right now, Clerkenwell, was outside the city limits. So if you look really carefully, all of this would have been the graveyard. You can see the gravestones there. all being made into uh, a seating area. But I'm not sure, I'm not 100% sure whether the bodies are still here or not, but in my head, realistically, they probably are all still buried under the ground here. 
coming out of the Barbican area. I do believe this is going to lead us to the Museum of London, which is a really nice museum. You should go check it out. Okay, so the dots are connecting up quite nicely. I uh, know where I am now. I'm literally walking above City Road, so where the London Wall once went. And uh, just over here, once upon a time that was a big church, now it's just the spire. Not 100% sure what happened to it. I think it was uh, a bomb during the uh, Blitz. But uh, that is just the spire of the church, right in the middle there. Still left. There you go. So we've got the Barbican over there. Underneath us right here, this is... Um, underneath this floor is the City Road. And then over there, that is the City of London. So we're going to head over this direction. I'm going to try and head back up in towards uh, Clerkenwell. And this area as well was also known as Cripplegate, as we discussed it before. Um, the Roman Wall had lots of different gates in it, and there would have been another gate here at this area, and it was known as the Cripple Gate. So it's pretty cool how it all connects up. I've never uh, walked around the Babacan area properly before. But uh, it's a good uh, wet weather activity because uh, the majority of it is all uh, covered up. But uh, I say that we're now headed outside and uh, we now reach the Museum of London, which, in my opinion, is the best museum in London. Oh, here we go then. So, this street right here, this is uh, uh, City Road. London Wall is right here and then uh, just over here we've got the uh, remains of the medieval and Roman wall that went around the whole city of London there you go just a little bit of what left what's left a little bit of what's left um, yeah that's the Museum of London that section right there tells you all about when the Romans were here and they built the uh, wall I know that because I've been inside There you go. Okay, so like I said, the dots are all starting to connect now. We are, we've left the Museum of London area and the Barbican area. And uh, we're now heading towards Smithfield's Market. Smithfield Market is, uh, or was, the meat market of London originally. Uh, it was a place of public execution as well. Um, William Wallace, a brave man, uh, was executed here. He was hung and quartered here on uh, the spot of what is now Smithfield's Market. Uh, these days, Apparently the Museum of London that we just went to is going to be moving to Smithfields. Um, but apparently that's been going on for a while now, so uh, whether it comes to fruition, I don't know. We'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, here we go. Smithfield Market just ahead of us here. Have a look. So here we are, Mint Smithfield Market, but uh, for the James Bond fans among you, just over here is um, where James Bond, Daniel Craig's James Bond, actually uh, went down there in a car or came back out of it in a car uh, on his way down to uh, Kew Branch in one of the uh, one of the latest movies. So uh, for the James Bond fans among you, you'll know what that is. If you don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. But it is right across the way from Smithfield's Market. Alright, what 
we got here then? So Smithfield, hangings, burnings and martyrdom. The market of medieval times was a dangerous and exciting place. Public executions were held, hanging, disemboweling and scenes of torture commonplace. One of the most famous victims was the Scottish revolutionary William Wallace, who in 1305 was dragged behind a horse from the Tower of London to Smithfield, where he was hung, drawn and quartered. Muggers and pickpockets were rife. The place had a reputation as one of the roughest in London, with a particular dislike of outsiders. The wife's sale became popular in the early 19th century. Divorce was exceedingly difficult and men brought their unwanted wives along with their normal goods to the meat market to sell them. There we go. Wow. How about that then? So uh, people used to sell their wives here as well. Well, what we got with here? Queen Mother. On the 4th of July 1954, rationing on meat was lifted and Smithfield Market was back to normal. Meat came from New Zealand, Australia, Africa and South America, brought to the market by rail to the unloading bays underneath the building. Now the car park. The great displays of careless uh, carcasses and the grand cast iron, cast iron structure of the Horace Jones building provide a fascinating view of an era long gone before Britain joined the common market and patterns of world trade as well as the hygiene regulations and change forever. Wow. Look at all them sheep. Wow, look at all them carcasses. Smithfield was hit again in 1945, the second to last V2 rocket to be targeted on England, landed by Hart's Corner in Farringdon Street, killing 160 people and destroying the fish, fruit and vegetable section of London Central Markets. Wow, there you go. That's where it looked like. World War II, the market closes. During the Second World War, Smithfield shut for business. The government did not want large concentrations of people in buildings that were easily recognizable from the air. The decentralizing of meat stores put paid to Smithfield's trading. It was only used to store small amounts of meat and to provide space for an army butcher's school. In 1942, the poultry market was damaged by a German bomb, which is the one that we just saw right there. And then finally over here we go, Smithfield in its heyday. During the pre-war period, Smithfield thrived at the centre of the meat trade in the British Empire. The market and its related businesses were huge employers preparing smoking, butchering and selling. So 
that's the meat market still up there. Opening hours from 2 a.m. till 10 a.m. Monday to Friday. It's now 12 o'clock. So there we go, that's Smithfield. We walked straight through it there. Uh, now we're going to head down to uh, Farringdon and uh, we're going to finish up this uh, video. Now, incidentally, at the bottom of here is uh, the Farringdon station. We've also got the um, new Elizabeth line that comes into Farringdon station. And uh, if you uh, want to watch a video on that, I've done one. Yeah, check that out. Just up there or there, one of, one of these two corners. Uh, so you can check that out if you want. Alright, there you have it folks, that brings us to the end of uh, this video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and uh, I'll see you on the next one. All the best, take care.